Okay, now let's start with chapter two, motion along a straight line. Within this chapter, we will see displacement. Actually, during the last lecture, we have explained what is displacement. And today we will have a relation between displacement and velocity and acceleration. So it will help us to describe straight line motion. What is straight line motion? A motion along certain axis, okay? Along a single axis, this is straight line motion. And then we will talk about instantaneous velocity. Here we have average velocity, you see. Average velocity in Turkish ortalama hız. Instantaneous velocity anlık hız, okay? They are different from each other. And we will also see the difference between velocity and speed. So what is the main difference between velocity and speed? Velocity is a vector, speed is a scalar, okay? Which we have learned during the last lecture. What is vector, what is scalar? Vector has magnitude and direction, but scalar has only magnitude. We will discuss the difference between these two words. And then we will see acceleration. Actually, acceleration is not hızlanma. Acceleration in physics, ilme, ilmelenme, okay? Never confuse with velocity. Today, we will see average acceleration and instantaneous acceleration. Again, like in velocity, we have average and instantaneous words. And during the next lecture on Thursday, we will talk about constant acceleration and free falling objects due to the gravity. We will talk about this. And as a next topic of this chapter, we will talk about non-constant acceleration. So acceleration will change by time, okay? We will discuss displacement, velocity, and acceleration, three important terms. So here we have a dragster, a car started from starting point and it goes to the finished point. So if I choose, this is the origin zero. And then if I choose this direction is positive X direction. So then I can say that a particle moving along the X axis has a coordinate X. The change in the particle's coordinate namely displacement is given by delta x. So here we have position one, for example, and the x coordinate of this dragster, this car at the first second is given by 19 meter. This is the position one, 19 meter far from the origin starting point. And here we have position two when the time is four second and the Position is 277 meter far from the starting point. Okay, position one, position two. So what is the delta X? The change in the particle's coordinate or the change in the car's coordinate is given by X2 minus X1. Final coordinate minus initial coordinate. Then what is the average x velocity of the particle or average x velocity of this dragster, which is given by delta x over delta t. This is the time interval and this is the displacement, you can say. And here what we have, velocity is shown by this symbol and here you have average according to x, okay? So it is important. This motion can also be along the y-axis. In this case, you have to use average y velocity. Or if this motion is along the z direction, you have to use average z velocity. It means that average velocity along the z axis. But here we are talking about the average velocity along the x-axis. So it is given by delta x over delta t. So what is delta x? We have already done it here. Final x coordinate of the particle or final x coordinate of the car. And here we have x1, initial x coordinate of the particle. Okay, x2 minus x1, always like this. And here we have time interval. The final time is four seconds. Initial time was one second here. 
then final time minus initial time. This will give us average velocity of this car. So what is the meaning of X velocity? Let me also tell you this explanation. Let's consider that this car or this dragster has zero velocity here at the starting point and then its velocity is increasing. Here it has certain velocity, let's say 10 kilometer per hour, okay? And here this has velocity 50 kilometer per hour and here it has 100 kilometer per hour, okay? So depending on the time and position, it has different velocities. But average velocity between these two positions can be calculated with that relation. Do we have any question here in that point? Then let me continue. So here we have chosen this dragster moving from zero to the positive x direction. And let's try to calculate its average velocity. Average velocity of this dragster is given by delta x. Delta x is equal to 277 meter final position minus initial position 19 meter. Put them here. The delta x will be 258 meter. Put this 58, 258 meter here. And here, delta t, final time, initial time. Four second minus one second, three second then the result is 86 meter per second. Again, look at the calculation. I always use units, okay? So displacement is in meter and time is in second and the unit of velocity is meter per second. So now we have average velocity of this dragster. So now look at this track. This track is moving from this initial position. This is the X1 initial position of the track and it is moving from positive X direction to the negative X direction. OK, so then it is exactly going in opposite direction compared to this one. If you choose coordinate axis like this, positive X is in this direction, then beta X will be final x minus initial x. Final x is this one, final position, 19 meter, put it there, minus initial position, 277 meter, then this delta x will be minus 258 meter, okay? Displacement is negative because this track is moving along the negative x direction. Then, what about delta t? Uh, when it is at initial position, the time was 16 seconds. Here, time is 25 seconds. So delta T is 9 seconds. Then what about the average velocity of this track? Average velocity of this track is minus 29 meter per second. So here we have minus sign. What is the meaning of this minus sign? The track is moving along the negative X direction. Here we have positive sign. The dragster is moving along the positive x direction. Do you have any question here? OK, then let me continue and to tell you the rules for the sign of x velocity. This is the x axis, positive x direction, negative x direction, and shown the positions here, initial position, final position, and this is the velocity with red color. So here we have X coordinate and here on the right side on right column we have X velocity. Here we define the position X1, X2, okay? And here on the right side we define the velocity with the red color. So now let's discuss. If X coordinate is positive and increasing getting more positive. So this was the initial position of the particle, let's say, X1, and this is the final position, X2. So what we see here, it is getting more positive. The position is positive and it is increasing, getting more positive. Then particle is moving in positive X direction. 
particle is moving from this point to this point along the positive x direction. Is it clear? OK, then second situation. X coordinate is positive, but it is decreasing, getting less positive. It means that initial position is here. X coordinate is positive on the positive X side and then it is decreasing. This is the final position, so it is getting less positive. Then it means that the particle is moving in negative X direction. OK, this was the initial position. This is the final position. So we have this direction of the velocity. Now look at this one. Sometimes people, students confuse this one, but be careful, then you can easily understand. X coordinate is negative. It means that the particle is staying here at the beginning, initial position of the particle on the negative side, and then it is increasing, getting less negative. Increasing means that if this is zero, okay, this is the origin, if you are going this positive side, it means that it is increasing. If you are going to the negative side, it means that it is decreasing. OK, for example, negative one, negative two, minus three, minus five. OK, it is decreasing. But here. You come to the zero and then plus one, plus two, plus three, it is increasing. OK, then let me continue. The initial position is negative and it is increasing. It means that it is going to the positive side. So this is the final position. It means that X coordinate is getting less negative. Here, let's consider it is minus five. Now we have minus one, let's say, okay? Then it means that the direction of the velocity is from negative to the positive along the positive X direction. The final situation, the X coordinate is negative and decreasing. It means that getting more negative. This is the initial position of the X coordinate and it is decreasing, getting more negative. Initial position was minus two meter, then final position is minus 10 meter, let's say. Decreasing, okay, getting more negative. Then the direction is from positive to the negative. OK, it means that the particle is moving in negative X direction. So these are the rules for the sign of X velocity. Why here we have X velocity is along the X axis. OK, if velocity is along the Y axis, you have to use here Y velocity. And if velocity also in the Z axis, then there will be Z velocity like vectors. Velocity is a vector. It has certain direction and it has certain magnitude and uh, velocity vector can be in three dimensional. Later on, we will see that. Do you have any question here? with the rules for the sign of X velocity. OK, now let me repeat important point here. When you are solving problem, you can choose this side as positive X or you can choose this side as positive X. It depends on you, but whenever you choose your coordinate axis, you must continue always by using this coordinate axis in your calculations. So here there is a man driving a bicycle and moving to the left. If you choose coordinate axis like this, this is positive X, this side is negative X, it means that this guy has negative X velocity because it is moving along the negative X direction. But if you have this type of coordinate axis, this is origin and this is positive X direction, then this has a positive X velocity. OK, this is very important and it is entirely up to you. It depends on your choice. Any question? OK, now let me continue with the position time graph. It is very easy to understand. Don't worry about this. This is the time axis. Time in second, first second, second, third second, fourth second, fifth second. OK, this is the time axis. And then this is the position of the particle position of the car 
here there is a dragster, this one, okay, moving along the x axis and started from position one and it goes to the position two. So 100 meter, 200 meter, 300 meter, 400 meter, this is the x position, okay? So we are discussing the position time graph. When the time is one second, the initial position of the car is here, position one or X one. And after certain time, after four seconds, the position, final position or second position of the car is given by X two or position two, okay? This is the final position. So what is the displacement delta X? X2 minus X1. This is the displacement of the car, right? Displacement of the dragster. And what is the delta T? Final time, initial time, okay? Delta T is final time minus initial time. If I use delta X and delta T, put them here, I can get average X velocity, the average velocity along the X axis, okay? So, okay, this is good, but from this graph, what can I get? If I draw a line from position one to the position two, what do you see here? This slope, is given by delta x over delta t. This slope gives us average x velocity, okay? This slope here gives us delta x over delta t, average x velocity. So from the graph, you can also get this average x velocity. So here, what is the slope of this line? Positive, okay? Delta X is positive, and here we have positive number of delta T, so the result is positive, positive average X velocity. It can also be negative. Now I will discuss these situations, but first of all, if you have any question, please let me know with this explanation. Do you have any question here? Okay, now let's continue with instantaneous velocity. Here we have average velocity, average velocity between these two positions. Instantaneous velocity means that in Turkish unlock hız, what is the instantaneous velocity here at the position two? Or what is the instantaneous velocity here when the time is three seconds? Or what is the instantaneous velocity here when the time is one second? This was the average velocity. So instantaneous velocity is the velocity at a specific instant of time. Instant means that very, very, very short time. Okay, don't forget this one. So now how to define this instantaneous velocity. It is given by Vx. The difference from the average is here we use average x, but here we just use Vx, okay? instantaneous x velocity. Limit delta t goes to zero, delta x over delta t. It is very easy to understand. Here in the average x velocity, we have this term delta x over delta t, change in the position, change in the time, right? Change in the position, change in the time. But here, what is the time? In the instantaneous velocity, the time, the change in the time or delta t goes to zero. We are talking about very, very short time, okay? For this reason, instantaneous velocity, unlock. For this reason, we use limit delta t goes to zero, okay? Then Vx can be written with this form, derivative of x as a function of t, dx over dt. So. In physical, we can explain, we can define like this, the instantaneous rate of change of particles x coordinate. Do we have any question here related to the instantaneous velocity? You can, I think, understand the difference. In case of instantaneous velocity, we are talking about very, very short time. Now, let's discuss some words, velocity, speed, 
instantaneous speed, instantaneous velocity, instantaneous speed. Okay, we will discuss these things. In our daily life, we use velocity and speed interchangeably. But in terms of physics, it is not correct. So velocity is a vector, but speed is a scalar. Velocity has direction and magnitude. For example, the velocity of this car along the positive x-axis. Or velocity of this track, for example, along the negative x direction here in the, this coordinate axis. But speed is a scalar, okay? So th they are different from each other. So what is instantaneous speed? Instantaneous speed measures how fast a particle is moving. So here we have seen instantaneous velocity. So we have certain velocity and it has direction and magnitude, but speed, instantaneous speed, has only magnitude, but no direction. Okay, instantaneous velocity measures how fast and in what direction it's moving. So velocity is a vector, okay? Speed is the magnitude of instantaneous velocity, and it can never be negative because negative value shows us the direction and direction is only possible in the velocity okay so here let me let me give you an example to understand the difference between instantaneous velocity and instantaneous speed we have a particle with instantaneous velocity vx 25 meter per second let me draw the first particle is moving in that direction. It has Vx is equal to 25 meter per second. And here we have another particle, second particle. It has velocity like this. If you have negative sign, it means that it is going along the negative x direction. So velocity of this particle is given by 25 meter per second. So what about their instantaneous speeds? Both of them have same instantaneous speed of 25 meter per second, okay? Magnitude of this velocity is 25 meter per second. Magnitude of this velocity is 25 meter per second. So speed cannot be negative because it is just magnitude. The negative sign here just showing us the negative direction, opposite direction. Do you have any question here? Okay, now let me discuss with you average speed and average velocity. Let me choose the laser pointer. We have learned average velocity and we have also learned speed, but what is average speed? Average velocity, magnitude of average velocity can be different from magnitude of average speed. So here, again, look at this one. We have discussed instantaneous velocity, instantaneous speed. And I have told you that instantaneous speed is the magnitude of instantaneous velocity. But what about average velocity, average speed? average velocity, average speed. And now you must be very careful because average speed is not the magnitude of average velocity. Here, I will explain this phenomena with this example here. Cesar Cielo, I don't know the correct pronunciation, set a world record in 99 by swimming 100 meter in 46.91 second. So this is the swimming pool. The length of the swimming pool is 50 meter. And this is Cesar Cielo, okay, swimmer. And then he started from this point and then he did swim 50 meters and then turn back another 50 meter and then 100 meter. So he did swim this 100 meter in 46.91 seconds. So what about his average speed? 
So this was the starting point. This guy started to swim from this point and then come back again. What is the total displacement? Total displacement is zero, okay? Delta X is zero here. So if you put zero here, average velocity will be zero because the velocity of this guy was zero here, started from this point and then come back again to this point. Then finally, it has zero velocity. Average velocity is zero since delta X total displacement is zero. But this is average velocity. In case of average speed, we have total length. He did swim 50 meters plus another 50 meter, 100 meter, and then he spent 46.91 seconds, and its average speed was 2.132 meter per second. Okay, this is average speed. Average velocity is zero because he had zero total displacement. Do we have any question here? Why I am discussing these things? Instantaneous speed is the magnitude of the instantaneous velocity. Velocity is a vector. This is a scalar. So, but in case of average velocity and average speed, the situation is completely different. Average speed is not the magnitude of average velocity because here in this example, average speed is completely different from the average velocity. Average velocity is zero because total displacement is zero, but average speed is calculated with these values. Both average speed, which we have discussed here, and also the instantaneous speed we have discussed here are scalars, not vectors. Okay, don't forget this one. So now let me give you one example. Do you have any question here at that point? Now let me discuss the example from the book. A cheetah is crouched 20 meters to the east of a vehicle. Cheetah is here and vehicle is here. Distance is 20 meters. At time t is equal to zero, the cheetah begins to run due east toward an interlope that is 50 meters to the east of the vehicle. So here we have antelope. The distance between antelope and vehicle is 50 meter, okay? And at this condition, when the time is zero, cheetah starts to run to catch this antelope, okay? During the first two seconds of the chase here, the cheetah's X coordinate varies with time according to the equation. X is equal to 20 meter here, initial position, plus 50 meter per square second times T square. So this is the change in the position of the cheetah. This is the initial position. This is first position. This is second position. And these positions are changing with that relation. So one second, two second, if you put here the time instead of T square, then you can calculate the position of the cheetah. So this is given in the question. Find the cheetah's displacement between T1 and T2. So it asks within the question, what is the delta X displacement of the cheetah between these two positions? And B, let me put sign here, find displacement. This is the first question. Second question, find its average velocity and find its instantaneous velocity at T1 when the time is one second by taking delta T 0.1 second, then 0.01 second, then 0.001 second. What was instantaneous velocity? Instantaneous velocity means that the velocity of the particle in a very, very short time, delta T will be very small. And the question tells us that calculate instantaneous velocity when the delta T is 0.1 second, 
when the delta t is 0.01 second, when the delta t is 0.001 second. So for three conditions, we have to calculate instantaneous velocity. And the last question, derive an expression for the cheetah's instantaneous velocity. Here, the x coordinate of the cheetah is given the stat relation and the d asks that derive an expression for the cheetah's instantaneous velocity as a function of time. Like this one, we have to find a relation between time and instantaneous velocity and then we have to use that relation to calculate instantaneous velocity for time one second and time two seconds. So now the solution. What we have here, the position of the vehicle is given, the position of the cheetah is given, and the position of the antelope is given, the x depends on time this is given so we have four questions first of all just use this sketch okay we have this sketch initial position of the cheetah when the time is zero then position one when the time is one second position two when the time is two seconds so then let's continue which type of equations we will use we we have to define these equations. We use equation 2.1 for the displacement, this equation, displacement equation, and equation 2.2 for average velocity. Average velocity is given by the expression. Okay, and then equation 2.3, instantaneous velocity. Instantaneous velocity is given by this expression or given by this expression vx is equal to limit delta t goes to zero delta x over delta t or dx over dt we have done it in previous transparencies okay so identify we have uh, learned which magnitude or quantity uh, is given within the question and then within the setup I have defined which equations I have to use in order to answer these questions then execute we will do mass so what was the first question we have forgotten the questions so find the cheetah's displacement between t1 and t2 displacement here between t1 and t2 here. In order to calculate x1, I can use this expression. Just write instead of t one second and instead of t just use two seconds and then you can calculate x1 and x2 here. 20 meter plus 5 meter per square second times square of one second square of one second again 20 meter plus five meter per square second times square of two second so x1 first position is 25 second position 40 meter so this was the cheetah's starting position 20 meter right 20 meter far from the vehicle and when the time is one second cheeta is here 25 meter this is five meter okay between initial point and x1 so when the time is two seconds the second position is 40 meter. This one, go back. The position is 40 meter. And the delta x, 40 minus 25 meter. Okay, 
delta x 40 minus 25 meter, 15 meter. Within these two time intervals, the cheetah has 15 meter displacement. We have calculated, which is asked within the question. And then average velocity, average velocity within this time interval here, this one, average velocity is given by delta x over delta t. Delta x we have already calculated, 15 meter. Delta t, t2 is two second, t1 is one second, delta t is one second. Then the result is 15 meter per second. What about c? Find its instantaneous velocity at t1 is one second by taking delta t 0.1, 0.01, 0.001. Now, delta t is 0.1 second. The time interval is t1 is 1 second to the new t2 is 1.1 second. So then x2 here, where is x2? x2 is this one, okay? Just use this relation, 20 meter, 5 meter per square second times instead of t, just use this time, t2, 1.1 second. Take square of it, and then finally you will have 26.05 meter. We have found the x2, the average x velocity within this time interval is 26.05 meter minus 25 meter. I mean, this one here, x1 is here, when the time is one second, let me clean this part. Maybe you have confused. Look at the question here. Find its instantaneous velocity at t1 one second by taking delta t 0.1 second. So t1 here one second and delta t 0.1 second. After 0.1 second, what is the position? So here, what is the t2? T2 is 1.1 second because delta T is 0.1 second, okay? Then here I have NIV X2. So how to calculate this X2? Just use this one. T2 is given 1.1 second. Put it there. You can calculate X2. Then x2 is this one, average x velocity is given by that expression, 0.5 meter per second, 10.5 meter per second. Instead of 0.1 second interval, here you can take this one. Let me use another pen here. Another x2, let's consider that the time here 1.01 seconds, okay? Very short time compared to this one. And the last one is, listen to the question, another x2 for t2 is 1.001 second. Very, very short time. Then let me continue with the last one. Derive an expression for the cheetah's instantaneous velocity as a function of time. So what was the instantaneous velocity? Instantaneous velocity is given with that expression, dx over dt, we have already done within previous transparencies. What was x? x is given within the question. x is this one. This is the x. Take this x, put here, then d over dt, instead of x, 20 meter plus 5 meter per square second times t square. So take time derivative of this one. Since this is constant, time derivative of this one will be zero. And then time derivative of this one will be 2t. Then the result is 10 meter per square second times t. So what was the, the other part of the question d? Find instantaneous velocity at time is one second and time is two seconds. So you know the equation here. We have calculated 
instantaneous velocity and instead of time just use one second and then instead of time just use two seconds then you can calculate vx as 10 meter per second and 20 meter per second so this was the solution of this example do you have any question here okay now let's try to find the velocity on an xt graph so this is the time this is the position x this is time this is the position this is time this is the position so this is the formula for the average x velocity this is the instantaneous x velocity which we have discussed now by using these graphs we will try to calculate average x velocity and instantaneous x velocity look at this one this is the time axis, this is the x axis. So this is the position one, this is the position two. This is the delta x, this is delta t. Delta x over delta t gives us the average velocity. And also the slope of this line here will give us this average x velocity. And let's consider that delta x is 150 meter. Started from here and it goes to here. The change is 150 meter, the change in the position, and time is 3 minus 1, delta t is 2 seconds, then the average x velocity is 25 meter per second according to that relation, right? Now, let's get a shorter time. This is the position 1, this is the position 2. What you see here, the slope is decreased. This was the initial slope. This is the second slope. And delta x is 55 meter. Delta t is one second. Then the result, if you put these values here, average x velocity is 55 meter per second. If you go to that point, and if you would like to get the velocity for a very, very short moment, instantaneous velocity, just the slope of tangent gives us instantaneous x velocity. And you can calculate it like this, 160 meter per four second. This is the slope of the tangent, then 40 meter per second. So, by using these graphs, you can calculate average velocity, average velocity, and instantaneous velocity on the XT graphs. So now let me finish the first part of my lecture and then give a short break. So this is XT graph and the motion diagram. But what do you see here? Look at this slope. The slope is 75 meter per second. Here the slope is 55 meter per second. Here slope is 40 meter per second. So if the slope is smaller, then the velocity is also smaller, you see? So this information can help you here in this graph. This is another XT graph. This is the time, this is the X position. This is the origin. Here, there is a particle and it is coming from the negative x, okay? This is the origin, this is the positive x. And this is the time. As a function of time, we will discuss its position. So here, look at its slope. Slope is positive. Slope is positive. Then, Vx is positive. It means that the particle is moving from negative to the positive x direction. Okay? When the time is zero, for this point, Ta, time is zero, the particle, this is the x-axis, this particle is on the negative side here, negative x, and then goes to the positive side. How I know that this is going on positive side because here the slope is positive. And here at zero position at the origin, so the slope is positive, but the slope is much bigger compared to this one. Then the particle is staying here 
at the origin here and slope is positive, the direction of the velocity is along the positive x direction, then its velocity is much bigger compared to this one because slope is bigger. Here, special condition at C point, slope is zero, okay? Then since slope is zero, Vx is zero. It means that at this point, the particle Hocam. momentarily halts. Now look at this one. The slope is negative. This was positive slope, positive slope. And here we have negative slope, negative slope, negative slope in the XT graph means that Vx is negative. And then negative Vx means that particle is moving along the negative X direction. But it is staying at the positive X and then it goes to the negative X. And here particle is still in the positive X side and it goes to the negative side, but the slope here is much smaller than the slope here. Then the velocity is smaller than this one. Do we have any question here for the XT graph and a motion diagram? Any question here? Okay, now let me continue with the average acceleration. As I told you at the beginning of my talk, acceleration is ivme in Turkish, okay? And acceleration describes the rate of change of velocity with time. Of course, it has relation with velocity. Now we will define this relation. Like velocity, acceleration is also a vector quantity. It has certain direction and it has certain magnitude. Don't forget this one. Velocity, acceleration, displacement are vectors, but speed is scalar. So how to write average x acceleration? There is instantaneous acceleration and average acceleration. So average x acceleration is given with this term. So here a subscript average x. So average acceleration along the x-axis, okay? If you are talking about y-axis, you should put here y. If you are talking about z-axis, you should put z here. Now we are only talking about motion along a straight line, just along the x-axis. So average x acceleration is defined by delta vx over delta d. Delta vx, the final velocity of the particle minus initial velocity of the particle. And delta t is final time minus initial time. So here, there is a note from the book. There are many notes with the title of caution in the book. I strongly suggest you to read that cautions. They give very nice information. And here it says that don't confuse velocity and acceleration. Now let me magnify this one. So velocity describes how a body's position changes with time. It tells us how fast and in what direction the body moves. This is the velocity. But acceleration describes how the velocity changes with time. It tells us how the speed and direction of motion change. So to see the difference, you can see this example. Imagine you are riding along with the moving body. For example, you are driving a car. If car accelerates forward and gains speed, you feel pushed backward in your seat. If it accelerates backward and loses speed, you feel pushed forward. If the velocity is constant, and there is no acceleration, you feel neither sensation. Let me give you this example. First of all, read the question. An astronaut has left an orbiting spacecraft to test a new personal maneuvering unit. I have shown you a picture from the International Space Station during the last lecture. Just consider this picture. An astronaut has left an orbiting spacecraft to test a new personal maneuvering unit. 
as she moves along a straight line, her partner on the spacecraft measures her velocity every two seconds, starting at time t one second. So let's consider two astronauts. Both of them are ladies, okay? One is within the spacecraft, the other one is outside of the spacecraft, and uh, outside of the spacecraft, astronaut is moving along a straight line, and the astronaut inside of the spacecraft writing the velocity of the astronaut outside of the spacecraft. So now here we have the values. First second, the velocity, x velocity is 0.8 meter per second. Three second, velocity is 1.2 meter per second. So velocity is increased, you can see. Five second, velocity is 1.6 meter per second. Seventh second, Velocity is 1.2 meter per second, 9 second, 11 second, 13, 15. So there are different velocities. Now we have minus because direction is opposite. OK, if you have minus sign, don't forget you have opposite direction. So now the question, find the average X acceleration and state whether the speed of the astronaut increases or decreases over each of these two second time. So between one second, three second, between three second, five second, between five and seven seconds. So for each two second time interval, describe that whether the astronaut's speed increases or decreases. So here we have a graph, x velocity versus time. This is the t, this is the x velocity, time, x velocity, positive numbers for the x velocity, it means that it is going along the positive x direction. Negative numbers for the x velocity, it means that it is going along the negative x direction. And here we have another graph, time acceleration. Unit of velocity is meter per second. Unit is second here. And here, unit of acceleration is meter per square second. Let me go back. So look at the unit of acceleration unit of velocity is let me write down here units are very important don't forget so the unit of velocity meter per second right unit of time second then the unit of acceleration is meter per square second. This is the unit of the acceleration. So unit consistency is very important in physics as we have discussed during the first lecture. So now let's put these numbers here on these graphs. Let me choose the laser pointer. This is the time. One, three, five, seven, nine, 11 here and then 13 here and then 15 here. So look at this one. At the beginning, the velocity is 0.8 somewhere here before the one. And here, when the time is three seconds, the velocity is 1.2 meter per second, 1.2 somewhere here. So what do you see within that time interval? We have positive slope right and we have positive acceleration okay positive slope positive delta vx and positive acceleration here look at this one when the time is five second 1.6 meter per second when the time is seven second the velocity is 1.2 velocity is decreased and we have negative slope here negative slope here, then negative number here. Now acceleration is negative, you see? And here between nine and 11, it starts from minus 0.4 meter per second and then minus one meter per second. So what do you see here? Again, negative slope here, then we have negative acceleration. And here we have minus 1.6 here, and then minus 0.8 here, 
So we have positive slope, positive acceleration. This was the example. Now let me continue with the instantaneous acceleration, and then I will discuss the relation between velocity and acceleration in terms of direction. So instantaneous acceleration, as we have used the definition of instantaneous velocity, it is given by the time derivative of the velocity. This is the instantaneous acceleration along the x-axis. This is the instantaneous velocity along the um, x-axis. And we have time derivative of this vx, which gives us the instantaneous acceleration. So again, the definition is same. Actually, what we have learned here, delta vx over delta t gives us average x acceleration. But if the delta t is very short time, it means that limit delta t goes to zero. This defines very, very short time for the time interval. Then this instantaneous acceleration is given by dvx over dt. Do you have any question here? Let me continue with this example, example 2.3 from the book, average and instantaneous accelerations. So now, first of all, let me read the question. Suppose x velocity vx of the car. Where is the car? Let me show you the car. This car here, okay? A Grand Prix car at two positions, points on the straight away. This is the first position. It has certain speed and x velocity along the x axis. And at the second position, it has certain x velocity. Okay, so now let's go back. Suppose the x velocity vx of the car in the figure, which I have shown you, at any time t is given by this equation. So vx is given 60 meter per second plus 0.5 meter per cubic second times t square. So what we see here, this vx depends on time. Okay, this is constant, this is constant, but vx depends on time. So question, find the change in x velocity of the car in the time interval t1 to t2. Find the average x acceleration in this time interval. Find the instantaneous x acceleration at time t1 one second by taking delta t to be first 0.1 second, very short time, then 0.01 second, shorter time, then 0.001 second. So for the instantaneous acceleration, instantaneous velocity, we are dealing with very, very short times and derive an expression for the instantaneous x acceleration. Here we have expression for the vx. Now it asks that expression for the instantaneous x acceleration as a function of time. Very easy question, very similar to the question before this one. Let me start with the execution here. So what was the first question? Find the change in the x velocity of the car in the time interval t1 and t2. T1 here is one second, T2 is three second, and it asks what is the change in the X velocity. So V1X, when the time is one, put one second here and then calculate V1X, 60 meter per second plus 0.5 meter per cubic second times square of one second. And then just repeat the same procedure for the time two is equal to three seconds. Instead of t, just put three seconds here. And then initial velocity is 60.5 meter per second. And second velocity is 64.5 meter per second. And what was the question? The question is find the change in x velocity. I mean delta vx, change in the x velocity. V2x is 64.5 and V1x is 60.5 meter per second. The result is 4 meter per second. The second question, find the average x acceleration in this time interval. Average x acceleration is given by delta Vx over delta T. 
delta Vx we have calculated, put it there. Delta T is three minus one second, three second minus one second, then two second here. So the result is two meter per square second. Look at the unit. Unit of velocity is meter per second. Unit of acceleration is meter per square second. Good. Now find the instantaneous x acceleration at time t1 by taking delta t to be first 0.1 second, then 0.01, then 0.001 second. So when delta t 0.1 second like this here, delta t, then t2 is 1.1 second. So we are starting from one second. If delta t is 0.1, then second time will be 1.1 second. So then just take this 1.1, put this 1.1 second here instead of t, then you can calculate V2x 60.605 meter per second and delta Vx. So what was V1x? When the time is one second, the velocity is 60.5. Now velocity is 60.605 and the delta Vx is 0.105 meter per second. So just put delta Vx here, delta T is 0.1 second, then the average X acceleration is 1.05 meter per square second. You can also repeat calculations for delta T is 0.01 second and 0.001 second. So these are the results. So what was the last question? Find an expression for the instantaneous X acceleration as a function of time. So instantaneous X acceleration is given by dVx over dt, okay, d over dt. So here we have Vx. Vx is given, take this one, put it there, take time derivative of this function. So this is constant, time derivation of this constant is zero. Then we will have 2t here from that second expression. Finally, instantaneous X acceleration will be given with this term one meter per cubic second times t. So we have acceleration, instantaneous acceleration as a function of time. Instantaneous acceleration is a function of time, okay? Do you have any question here? Let me continue with the sign of x acceleration. This is one of the most important transparencies in this lecture, and you must be very careful. If you don't understand, please let me know. Now let's continue with the rules for the sign of X acceleration. So what is the sign of X acceleration? Here I have X coordinate. This is the positive X direction. This is the negative X direction. For each condition, I have same coordinate axis. This is positive X, this is negative X. Positive X, negative X, positive X, negative X. So now first condition. I have X velocity, X velocity shown by the red color and then X acceleration. Acceleration is shown by the green color, okay? Let's have a look. X velocity is positive and increasing, getting more positive. So the particle is moving along the positive X direction, okay? And what do you see here? Velocity is positive and increasing, getting more positive. It means that Particle is moving in positive X direction and speeding up, okay? So X acceleration is also positive here. The particle is speeding up. Since velocity and acceleration are in the same direction, then the particle is speeding up. Now let's have a look in the second situation. X velocity is positive and decreasing, getting less positive. So what is the meaning of positive Vx? Positive Vx means that the particle is moving along the positive x direction. So particle is moving along the positive x direction, but its velocity is decreasing. It means that getting less positive. It means that the particle is slowing down, okay? The particle is slowing down. If 
the particle is slowing down, it means that the acceleration is opposite to the velocity. Don't forget, this is general rule. If a particle is slowing down, velocity and acceleration have opposite directions. So now let's have a look at the third situation. The x velocity is negative and it is increasing. What is the meaning of increasing? Remember from the previous lecture before the break, let me let me draw here something. So here the x coordinate is increasing in positive x direction. So this is the increasing direction. This is the decreasing direction, which we have discussed before the break. Decreasing, OK, here we have zero center of the coordinate origin, OK? So I define this one is increasing, this one is decreasing. So now let's have a look. Here, the definition, the x velocity is negative. Negative means that, negative vx means that the direction of the velocity is along the negative x direction. And it is increasing. Increasing means that it gets less negative. OK, so if it is decreasing, it means that getting more negative. But if it is increasing, then it means that getting less negative, then particle is moving in negative x direction and slowing down because Vx and Ax have opposite signs. OK, then let me continue with the last one. Vx is negative and it is decreasing, getting more negative. OK, then acceleration is also negative. I mean, the direction of the acceleration is along the negative x direction and then particle is speeding up. Why? Because both Vx and Ax have same sign. OK, particle is moving in negative x direction and it is speeding up. Do you have any question with that rules? OK, then let me continue. Another caution from the book, signs of x acceleration and x velocity. So if something is not clear here, then you can go into the book and you can see this explanation, signs of x acceleration and x velocity. So here, when Vx and Ax have same sign, the body is speeding up. If both are positive, like here, along the positive x direction, the body is moving in the positive direction with increasing speed. If both are negative, body is moving in negative direction with an x velocity that is becoming more negative. And again, the speed is increasing, this condition. Both are negative. They have direction along the negative x, OK? So the particle is speeding along the negative x direction. Then the x and ax have opposite signs. Here the x and ax have opposite signs and here the x and ax opposite signs. Here the x is positive, ax is negative. They have opposite signs. Here the x is negative, but ax is positive. So they have opposite signs. When the x and ax have opposite signs, the body is slowing down. If the x is positive and ax is negative, so it goes the explanation what we have done here, OK? These two conditions are explained within that paragraph. I will not go into detail. I have already explained, but if something is not clear, please go to the book and carefully read that part of the chapter. Do you have any question related to that part? OK, let me continue. Finding acceleration on a VXT graph. This is the time axis. This is the velocity axis. So when the time is T1, the position of the particle, this is the velocity of the particle. When the time is T2, this is the velocity of the particle. So this is velocity time graph. 
So what was the average X acceleration? Average X acceleration is given by delta Vx over delta T. So this is the initial time, final time, and this is delta T. This is the initial velocity. This is the final velocity. This is the delta Vx, okay, change in the velocity. So just use this delta Vx, put it there. Just use this delta T, put it there. Then finally you can calculate average X acceleration. So what do you see here? This slope here gives us average X acceleration. Slope is calculated by this side over this side, okay? So this slope gives us average X acceleration. Look at the graph here. The slope is positive here, okay? And sometimes the slope can be negative. So depending on the positive or negative sign of the slope, it means that acceleration is positive or negative, okay? So you will see another example and graphs here. So just have a look this Vxt graph. This is the time, this is the x velocity. So x velocity is positive here. It means that particle is moving along the positive x direction. x velocity is negative here. It means that particle is moving along the negative x direction like this. Let me draw. Let's say this is the origin. This is the positive x direction. This is the negative x direction. And if this Vx is positive, it means that particle is moving in this direction. If this Vx is negative here, these numbers, it means that particle is moving, sorry, along this direction. Okay, so now let's have a look this graph. Let me choose the laser pointer again. Here we have time and Vx and this type of curve here. Here, when the time is A, when the time is zero, what do you see here? The slope is positive. And from Vxt graphs, we can calculate acceleration, right? Because the slope gives us the acceleration. So here, slope is positive and then acceleration is positive. Here, the slope is smaller than the slope here, but it is still positive, okay? Then acceleration is positive here. Here, slope is zero. What is the meaning of zero slope? Delta Vx is zero. It means that velocity does not change. This velocity and this velocity are same. So if velocity does not change, then delta V is zero, acceleration is zero. Slope is zero, acceleration is zero. Here we have constant velocity. Velocity does not change if the acceleration is zero. And here we have negative slope, acceleration is negative, and negative slope, acceleration is negative. Now let's have a look. Here we have same Vxt graph, and here on the right side, we have motion diagram, okay? This is the x-axis, positive x-direction, origin, negative x-direction, and we have one, two, three, four, five conditions. One, two, three, four, five conditions, okay? For each condition, what is the position of the particle and what is the direction of the velocity? What is the direction of the acceleration? Very important graph, try to stay on the line. Now, let's start from the A. When the time is zero for time TA, velocity is negative, look at the velocity. Velocity is negative. Then it means that particle is moving along the negative X direction because velocity is negative. But the slope is positive. AX is positive. AX is along the positive X direction. So what was the positive AX? Acceleration is also a vector. Velocity is vector, acceleration is also a vector. If acceleration is positive, then its direction is along the positive X direction. So now what do you see here? 
the particle is moving along the negative x direction, but acceleration is along the positive x direction. It means that they are opposite to each other. And if they are opposite to each other, it means that the particle is slowing down, okay? So here at B, velocity is zero. The particle is stopped momentarily and its velocity is zero, but its acceleration is positive. It means that it has acceleration in this side, okay? So here, at this point, we have positive velocity, then the particle is moving along this direction, but acceleration is zero. It means that the velocity is constant here. Instantly, it is not changing. Here, look at the velocity. Velocity is zero. The particle is at rest. Okay, it is not moving. Velocity is zero but acceleration is negative. Direction of the acceleration is along the negative x, okay? Then uh, we have this type of relation here, and here we have velocity negative. Particle is moving along the negative x direction. And then what about acceleration? The slope is negative, then acceleration is also negative. So both acceleration and velocity have same sign, okay? So the particle is speeding up along the negative x direction since they have same signs. Do you have any question here? Okay, let me finish with these two transparencies. So this is my last example to explain the XT graph. Here again, let me choose the laser pointer. Where is it here? This is the time, this is the X position. So the particle is staying here in the negative X side, okay? When the time is A and when the time is B, the particle is at the origin. And when the time is C, the particle is on the positive X side. And here again, the particle is moving to the origin, like this one. So at the beginning, it is on the negative side and it is moving to the positive side and then it goes to the origin again, like this. So the position versus time. But here we have velocity versus time and from velocity versus time graphs, we can calculate acceleration. We can get idea about acceleration. What about position time graphs? From the position time graphs, we can get information about velocity. But in addition to the velocity, from this type of XT graphs, we can get information about acceleration. How? Because instantaneous acceleration is given by time derivative of Vx. And what was Vx? Instantaneous velocity. Instantaneous velocity is given by time derivative of position. Okay, dx over dt gives us the Vx. So if I take time derivative of this function, then d squared dx over dt square will give us acceleration. So now I have relation between acceleration and position. Okay. Here I have position versus time graph. So here the particle is staying at negative side. So look at the slope. Slope is positive. It means that velocity is positive. Slope in the XT graphs gives us the sign of the velocity. Slope of VT graphs gives us the sign of the acceleration. So what about the sign of acceleration in XT graph? So if you take the second derivative of a function, the curvature will give you information about the negative and positive values. So when the time is zero, the position of the particle is on the negative side. So here the slope 
is positive, then Vx is positive, curvature is upward, and then acceleration is positive. And here, what do you see here? Positive number, positive number, then they have same sign and the particle is speeding up. Here, what is curvature? There is no curvature here. This is a line, okay? And slope is positive. It means that Vx is positive. Since curvature is zero, acceleration is zero. It means that velocity is constant here. And here we have slope is zero. Since the slope is zero, then velocity is zero. And curvature is downward then the acceleration is negative. Here, the slope is negative, okay? Curvature is zero. Here we have a, just a line, no curvature here. Then since curvature is zero, acceleration is zero. And the velocity is negative. It means that the particle is moving along the negative x direction. Since we have negative Vx here. Here, the slope is negative gain and what about acceleration curvature is upward for this reason acceleration is positive so negative vx positive ax it means that the particle is slowing down since they have opposite signs now let me show this motion in a motion diagram here so this is the x-axis, positive x-direction, negative x-direction, positive x-direction, negative x-direction for every situation. I have chosen the right side as a positive x and left side as a negative x, okay? Now let's discuss A and V according to this one. Here, slope is positive, Vx is positive. Vx means that particle is moving along the positive x direction. But what about the initial position? Initial position is negative, okay, x. Initial position is negative. Positive x, negative x. But the direction of the velocity is along the positive x because slope is positive. And ax is also positive. So since they have same sign, the particle is speeding up. And here, x is zero. The particle is at the origin slope is positive, then the particle is moving along the positive x direction. Curvature is zero, it means that the acceleration is zero. And here at C, slope is zero, it means that velocity is zero. The particle is at rest momentarily. And then curvature downward, it means that acceleration is negative. So if acceleration is negative, it's direction along the negative x, Okay, then like this. So here D, what we have here, slope is negative. Then we have negative velocity along the negative x direction. And then curvature is zero, acceleration is zero. And here finally we have time E. So again, the position of the particle is on the positive side here, somewhere here, very close to zero. What about the slope? Slope is negative. It means that the direction of the velocity along the negative x and curvature is positive. Then acceleration is along the positive x direction. So particle is moving along the negative x direction, but it is slowing down since A and V have opposite signs. These are the rules for the acceleration. Do we have any question? So next lecture we will continue with motion with constant acceleration. Acceleration will be constant and also we will talk about non-constant acceleration situations. So see you on Thursday.